Center for Environment Justice, CEJ, is a non-governmental organization whose mandate is to create platforms and processes that promote community access to quality and accurate information on environmental protection, extractive industries, sustainable energy, climate change, water security, and agriculture, with the ultimate aim of enhancing accountability for better decision-making and sustainable development, as well as support safe and adaptive environment as basic fundamental human rights to having a better and prosperous livelihood. The Community Voices documentary development has been undertaken by the Center for Environment Justice, CEJ, in Sinazongi District, Southern Province of Zambia. This documentary seeks to exemplify content and narratives of practices and conditions in local communities, thereby highlighting the current state of coal mining and development issues in rural communities respectively, and connecting practices among solutions to address the irreversible dangers to livelihoods and ecosystems due to unsustainable mining practices. CEJ, with the support from the Bird for the World, BFTW Germany, has been running a five-year project in Sinazongo district dubbed Mining Community Voices and Alternative Livelihoods Preparedness and Planning, ALPP. The goal of this project is to improve the living conditions of the communities and harness relationships with the coal mining companies and private sector through environmental responsive and humane business practices. Sinazongwe district is one of the three Gwembe rural valley districts located in southern province of Zambia. It lies in the southeast border of Zambia along Lake Kariba in the Zambezi Valley. The district lies between 300 meters and 900 meters above sea level and covers a total area of 4,964 square kilometers. It shares boundaries with four districts, Zimba and Kalomo in southwest, Choma and Pemba in the west, Gwembe in the northeast, and Zimbabwe in the southeast. Sinazongwe is endowed with mineral resources and official coal mining started in the year 2000. The district has enough coal reserves to simply supply both the local and international markets. Coal mining has taken a toll on the environment and livelihoods of the communities in the mining area. Reports show that, adding to the already established coal mines, namely Kolam Coal Mine, and Mamba Colories Limited, three additional mines have been established, and these are African Coal Mine, Sezik Resource Limited in Mwemba Chiefdom, and Zambian Weye Limited in Sinazongwe Chiefdom. Consequently, several challenges exist that affect livelihoods of the community members in the coal mining areas, and these include, among others, lack of consultative meetings with the community members prior to displacement, poor coal mining activities, water pollution from coal mining activities, lack of adherence to settlement processes and standards, lack of adequate monitoring of the investments by government ministries and agencies, land acquisition without consultation with local communities, and communities' lack of experience and knowledge to negotiate and are hence taken advantage of by these investors. Most importantly, the issue of compensation has been a continuous issue as indigenous communities have not been pleased and of which it has a huge impact on women and children. Communities have no access to social amenities such as health facilities, and schools. Loss of livelihoods as communities are moved away from their farmlands and markets. Communities are unable to benefit from processes of resettlement and compensation. And in some cases, community members are dragged to court for criminal trespass. 
To some extent, some community members have been displaced for more than once. Donat Sialuyele is one of the five traditional councillors acting as a bridge between village headmen and chief Sinazongwe. Mr. Sialuyele states that mining license maps are not in public domain, which is a challenge in determining the extent of the land. He further states that mining houses do not have written documents to guide implementation of their promises for corporate social and environmental responsibility. So if the map were there and it is known, even by our stakeholders like here, they, they could help the, the, the community. Yeah, yeah. Charles Ntiti was elected councillor from Kadawe Ward in Sinazongwe district. He shares his experience regarding the challenges and benefits of the coal industry in his area. From Colum is actually to have that quick response when he need arises. Because as I'm speaking now, our only reliance, yes, we're talking of a clinic which they want to put up, but the only hospital we have in the entire district is Mamba. So there is need for this company, since they're making money, let them put up a hospital so that when there are serious issues that has to do with accidents, other than lashing to Mamba, which is about the three kilometers distance, is better. Those cases are just out from within here. Village headman for Shabunyangu in Sinazese area, Sinazongo district, has been displaced several times to allow for mining activities. Water points in the new area have dried up. The area has no graveyard because of the mining activities and displacements. He complains that the compensation package were not sustainable. A water dam built by Germans for irrigation scheme is under threat as mining houses are stacking water, thereby threatening the lives of livestock. Irrigation James Chinene is HIV and AIDS Technical Support Foundation Hearts 4 in Sinazongwe District. Mr. Chinene states that silica from coal mines in Sinazongwe District is causing respiratory infections. Mr. Chinene complains that mines are not helping ordinary community members to be examined regarding impacts of mining on public health. Mining brings a lot of effects to the communities. Originally when this mine was opened, people were drawing water from these rivers here, but they have been polluted. And then the mine is not doing anything to that. Charles Mudenda, headman, Sikalonzo in Mwemba Chiefdom, fears that traditional leaders have been neglected. We are not even given directors the, the map. We just hear that we have 800 and something hectares. We have 400 something hectares, but where it ends, where it starts, we don't know. We are not given. I even asked that question to my traditional leaders, my village headman, the Africa Coal Powered Company in Murungwa. I said, where is this mine exactly starting from? I ah, know they're saying, you know, they start here, then how many hectares? Ah, they said, ah, no, we don't know. Others were saying now 80,000. Others were saying no, 400. So we don't know. Beauty Siwaze is a community health worker in Sinakomba area in Sinazongwe district. She says investors simply inform communities that decisions were concluded in Lusaka and they simply install peg demarcations, leaving them speechless. Ababa ntunoba kasiga inga tabajiti, tabajiti miswanga no kuti mwakala abamu mwonzi ambabo utu abamu ambila kuti iskwebo ndiskweba ni tubo olirajeji 
ngatabambi pe babola byo straight mubona byo myota irabola bayinka nkoba yawo obusena bagutalika ku guberega berega babika mapexi balamba wambusena bwesu twagabula twagamba olagala aba government gonse ku council twagayindagale bagatupa mapepa ngaya one of the sinazongo residents chinyama hachipola is a community member of Mwemba Chiefdom. Ms. Hachipola urges minds to share corporate social and environmental responsibility plans. I've never heard or seen of any of the companies sharing their CSER plans. So maybe if they had to share them, then we'd be aware of what they're doing. Not that they're not, not doing their CSER responsibilities, they are. It's just that they don't share their plans. So we have uh, examples, they built a clinic uh, in Lake Kariba, because that's where they draw their water from. So as part of CSUR for that community, they build them a health post. So you have such, you have uh, rehabilitation of roads within Mamba Township. They did the roads and everything, so that was a good part. They reduced on the dust and the health of the people within the community. So there are a number of them, but I just can't mention them all because they don't exactly share their plans. Center for Environment Justice, CEJ, is concerned about the turn of events. CEJ Executive Director Maggie Mwape is bringing all players together to protect both the investments and the community. If you are to move a family where they are going to, there are about five key socioeconomic factors that we need to look into where they are going. The issue of health facility, that is very important because they need to be closer to a health facility. Secondly, a school, because we don't want our children to be walking long distances to access um, a nearby school. Second, thirdly, issues of uh, water. Water for both human consumption as well as animals, because this is very also um, very important. The third thing is, are we having uh, road access to nearby markets? Because this is where they could go and trade and raise uh, issues of um, uh, funds for their family, source of income and all that. Lastly, but not the least, the issue of how will they now pick up you know, in this new area where they, they have gone, what activities are they going to be doing? Are they having enough land where they could do uh, issues of uh, like agriculture? People says they need an arable land so that they could feed their families and also just do other things that, that they would love to do. Chepe Gomudenda is Sinazonga District Planning Officer for Sinazonga District Council. Mr. Mudenda explains that Sinazonga District has developed an integrated development plan, IDP, to guide development in the district while addressing environmental concerns. As much as we need the investment in the district, I think we've tried as a local authority to encourage these local, uh, investors who come to invest that uh, environmental concerns should always be adhered to. Okay, We don't want to disturb our, our communities environmentally, Okay, so we need to have a win-win situation. I must mention that uh, we've developed the integrated development plan for the district and uh, one of the key issues we are looking at into that document were environmental concerns which we managed to get as we were doing the issues paper with the, the people. Fanuel Simonga works as Sinazonga District Administrative Officer. Mr. Simonga explains that the district administration has been instrumental in guiding investors to use the Office of the Government Evaluators to protect both the investment and the affected community. The best thing you can do with such matters to do with the displacement is better you involve the Office of the Government Evaluators. Because when you use government evaluators, your investment is protected, the, our people are protected, and the, 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 the document is acceptable. Even you can use the document before the Kosovo, should there be any dispute. Silume Similupi is the manager of Kaluwe Development Foundation, KDF, in Sinazongwe district. KDF calls for all political will by the New Dawn government regarding correct evaluation of the compensation package for displaced communities. In terms of uh, the displacement issues, it's like the government is not really playing a very good role in that. I say so because at times from these people who are displaced, you hear there is normally a talk to say 
the government had sent an evaluator to come and assess how much in terms of compensation should be given to each and every household. All of a sudden you find a situation whereby the investor says, no, I'm not happy with this particular investor who was appointed by the government. Then the investor appoints his own, um, his own consultant who comes now to do other assessments. So it means the assessment is based on what the investor wants to pay. CEJ Executive Director Maggie Mwapi emphasizes the need for moral responsibility regarding corporate social and environmental responsibility. Last year, the major objective was to come up with a CSR strategy that we did with thorough consultation at all levels. Government departments, traditional leaders, community members, civil society, the faith based to come up with a strategy where it can help the new investors and the old investors to identify some of the key pressing priorities that they can implement in the wards. And we had to do a thorough consultation for all the 14 wards then, but now we understand there are now 16. There will be need for us to see how best we could incorporate the other two wards in the strategy. When you've got uh, an investor coming, it doesn't mean that your life should be worsened or should be worse. Mm. It should be improved. Those people, let us help our people to learn, maybe to move from the life they have been leading by learning to touch a switch. Maybe two two bedrooms are built. They, we make it maybe a compound. They drill a bore. Mm -hmm. There is power. And I also gave them the condition to say 60% of the employees should be these same people you've displaced. That's the reason why they should not even go very far. CEJ Board Chairman Vincent Ziva added his voice. We're calling upon the cooperating partners to come on board, really, to support SAGE and many other initiatives that other stakeholders are playing, including government itself. How can we increase sensitization on peoples to claim their, their, their inheritance? If not, if they have to composite it, let there be equal or, you know, more than equal, because the, the mine's profits are imaginable compared to the displacements and the little composition that is given, and usually they'll look at the housing unit. But the other livelihoods asset, access to forest resources, clean water, are all not measurable by, the, by, by, by most of these mining firms. So that perpetuates poverty. CEJ Executive Director Mange Mwape observes the need to provide alternative land and social amenities such as water, schools, health facilities, roads, among others. For us, that is a strong message that we are sending, that uh, government should negotiate on behalf of the host communities when it comes to compensation and, and ensure that wherever these people go, we are able to provide all the necessary socio-economic uh, activities that they may need, issues of health facility, educational facilities, hospitals, issues of water, accessible roads, those are very important. Freeman Mubanga, CEJ, Head of Research and Studies, has this to say. CEJ has come up with, an, with a model called uh, Corporate Social and Environmental Responsibility, which is a model that just tracks the uh, corporate uh, social responsibility or CSR of mining communities in the areas where they are working. So to ensure that we are monitoring uh, their efforts and also we are moving to speed with what they are doing, CEJ has therefore uh, come up with a mobile application app called the CEJ app. So the importance of this app is to monitor and track the CSER activities that are being implemented in the district by the mining companies. CEJ Executive Director Maggie Mwate is lobbying for increased budget towards environment in the future by the new government. <laughs>